Will you agree them? Thank you. The usual notice about substitutes. The business this morning is the debate on the report on Bulgaria's application for membership of the Council of Europe, which is presented by the President of the Assembly, uh, Mr. Martinez, on behalf of the Political Affairs Committee. That's document 6591 with an opinion presented by Mr. Kollenberg on behalf of the Committee on Legal Affairs and Human Rights, document 6598, and an opinion presented by Mr. Rathbone on behalf of the Committee on Relations with European Non-Member Countries, document 6597. The list of speakers closed at five o'clock last night. There are 26 names on the list. No amendments have been tabled. In view of the time available, it is proposed that the speaking time in the debate be limited as follows. 10 minutes for the main rapporteur, seven minutes each for the rapporteurs for opinion, five minutes for other speakers, and 10 minutes for the committee's reply and then the vote. We will have to conclude the general debate by approximately 12.45 in order to allow time for the reply and the vote. Members who are on the list of speakers and present in the chamber, but who have not been able to speak, may submit their speeches in writing in a final and legible form at the end of the debate so that they may be published in the official report after the other speeches. Will you agree those arrangements? Thank you very much. I now call upon Mr. Martinez to present his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's with great pleasure that I decided to carry on this work as rapporteur on this significant issue in spite of my election to the presidency of the Assembly. But I thought it was really worth and, uh, carry on with this work and present you a report on behalf of the Political Affairs Committee a, a report which ends with a proposal with a, which uh, is submitted to you in the relevant document. Proposal which means that uh, the Assembly should recommend to the Committee of Ministers the acceptance of Bulgaria as the 27th uh, member of the Council of Europe. I think this is an important issue uh, and uh, the reporting work is actually uh, the result not only of uh, work or research that has been carried out by the three uh, committees involved in the matter and uh, by the three rapporteurs, but I think this is the result of uh, a number of uh, contacts, I should say by the result of a consistent and persistent work of uh, m even more committees than those three ones involved in the affiliation procedures. Uh, all the committees of the Assembly which have been witnessing and uh, following the evolution of uh, Bulgaria in uh, the uh, recent uh, years. Uh, as a matter of fact, well over the drafts which are submitted to you, uh, we have been following the situation, I should even say more than following, we have been accompanying Bulgaria and the Bulgarian people in their way towards democracy and freedom and in their efforts to re-establish the rule of law in their country. Uh, the details uh, uh, of the process are contained in the reports from the first elections and even before. And uh, I want uh, to thank very warmly uh, uh, Mr. Kolumberg and uh, Mr. Radbone for the uh, most uh, fraternal, should they say, cordial cooperation which we have established. Uh, I have been uh, in other opportunities involved in reports which uh, 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 were responsibility of uh, several rapporteurs and I must admit that uh, in this opportunity it has been a real pleasure 
to work uh, with people who, no matter if we did belong to different political groups and views, uh, uh, found ourselves in agreement uh, whenever it was uh, a question to evaluate the situation in Bulgaria. Uh, as I say, the details are contained in the three reports, which are extremely complementary. I think it was a good procedure to be followed in further cases also that the three rapporteurs produce separate reports but join in the proposal uh, uh, of the draft order. Uh, I would like to add uh, um, only that our committee uh, found uh, that uh, Bulgaria had reached by now the standards in terms of human rights, pluralism and freedom, the standards which entitle this country to join the Council of Europe. Nevertheless, one has to be aware about the fact that on the one hand there is still much progress to be expected, basically in the economic field. On the other hand, there are a number of phenomena happening in Bulgaria, taking place in Bulgaria, which uh, gave us serious reason for concern about the near future of this country. Uh, this uh, uh, concerns uh, basically the fact, Mr. Chairman and dear colleagues, the fact that the country and the population seems uh, quite divided in two blocks which not only have different opinions, I mean, having different opinions is uh, normal in democracy, we find the country, the population divided in two blocks, two fronts which oppose each other, which confront each other, and that is fair enough. The problem is that those two blocks have a very dangerous tendency to disqualify each other as, as partners for the democratic game. Uh, the, what I would call the conservative forces or the right wing, uh, center right wing forces, which have uh, gained majority in uh, fair and free elections, disqualify the opposition, the opposition mainly uh, formed by the Bulgarian Socialist Party, because this party was communist in the past, so because of the communist past, the opposition is disqualified by the ruling forces. And uh, the ruling forces are disqualified because of uh, suspicion that it may behave in a totalitarian way in the future. So because of the past and because of the future, those blocks are disqualifying each other for the democratic game which takes place in the present. And this is certainly bad and uh, creates uh, tensions which... Uh, uh, fortunately uh, uh, are solved uh, by common sense here and there uh, and I want to say that uh, the President of the Republic, Mr. Jelev, who attended uh, and addressed once uh, our assembly is uh, somehow one of the best symbols of this common sense, of this refusal to play uh, Bulgarians against Bulgarians and uh, is, in my view, also a guarantee for the genuine democratic uh, consolidation of the country in the future. I think common sense is also uh, made evident by a decision which we have been reported very recently, which we have not been able to check, but no doubt it's correct, saying that the Constitutional Court has decided against the uh, appeals that were put by one or the other political force in order to declare illegal one another. So fortunately, the Constitutional Court seems to have settled that all of them have the right to play and that uh, in the future, as it should be in democracy, it's not one force that disqualifies the other, it is the people with their votes in the voting uh, boxes. It's the people that qualifies and that says who has the right and who has the weight to play in democracy. 
We all believe that the conditions uh, demanded to be a full member are implemented. The tendency towards progress in the economic field is there. Certainly there is, as in other countries, having had uh, a, a, a communist past in the recent years, there is a certain chaos, no doubt about it. But we think the tendency and especially the will to uh, settle things is there in this uh, economic field. The quicker, the better. The quicker, the easier uh, to give assistance from other European and, uh, countries to the Bulgarian economy. And uh, I believe also uh, the entrance uh, of Bulgaria in the Council of Europe, which, by the way, all political forces asked us, majority, minority, and even non-parliamentarian forces, will accelerate this process and will accelerate also the process to bring tolerance and uh, recognition and therefore consolidate the democratic rule. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank very much those who received us from President, uh, President uh, Jelev, Speaker uh, Savov, our delegation, the special guests, our experience in, in Bulgaria uh, gave the evidence that uh, it was a very big success to create this category of uh, special guests a few years ago. To our colleagues in Parliament in general, I think we have to thank for their hospitality and especially for the help and sincerity which we, with which they treated us. Sometimes I wouldn't like to say that they were too sincere, but uh, I think they were getting absolutely naked in front of us, showing us the problems, showing us their problems in a way which uh, uh, was even embarrassing sometimes because we were tending to tell them, well, we also have problems. You know, it's not only you who have uh, those kind of problems. Democracy is a process in which we are all uh, learning and uh, progressing naturally. Uh, Mr. President, dear friends, well, it's a beautiful country, brave, peaceful, intelligent people, and they will be a, a serious contribution for stability also in the region and within the Council of Europe. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. I now call on Mr. Kollenberg to present the opinion of the Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee for seven minutes. Herr Präsident, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, der Ausschuss für juristische Fragen und für Menschenrechte hat das Aufnahmegesuch Bulgariens sehr eingehend und sehr gründlich geprüft. Unsere Besuche, unsere Gespräche und die Ergebnisse unserer Abklärungen sind in unserem umfangreichen Bericht enthalten. Ich persönlich hatte das große Vergnügen, viermal Bulgarien zu besuchen, zweimal als Wahlbeobachter, einmal mit unserem Rechtsausschuss und einmal mit den Berichterstattern Herr Martinez und Herr Ratton. Dadurch war es mir möglich, einen vertieften Einblick in die politischen, wirtschaftlichen und sozialen, gesellschaftlichen Verhältnisse dieses schönen Landes zu gewinnen. Aus Zeitgründen muss ich mich hier im Plenum auf einige Schlussfolgerungen beschränken. Erstens, die Vorbedingungen für die Aufnahme Bulgariens in den Europarat sind erfüllt, nämlich die Durchführung freier und fairer Wahlen im Juni 1990 und am 13. Oktober 1991, die Parlamentswahlen, die Kommunalwahlen und dann im Januar dieses Jahres die in Wahl Oktober des Staatspräsidenten. Ein zweites. Bulgarien besitzt eine Verfassung, die den europäischen Standard entspricht, die die Prinzipien des, der parlamentarischen Demokratie, des Rechtsstaates und des Vorrangs des Rechts garantiert. Drittens. Seit der großen Wende sind beachtliche, ganz beachtliche Fortschritte im Demokratisierungsprozess erzielt worden. Parlament und Regierung sind fest entschlossen, diese Reform.
Abkommen fortzusetzen. Viertens, seit Oktober 1989 konnten einige wichtige Errungenschaften realisiert werden, zahlreiche Maßnahmen zur Beachtung der Menschenrechte, der politische Pluralismus, die Parteienvielfalt, heute bestehen über 40 politische Parteien, die Pressefreiheit, ein besserer Schutz der Minderheiten, der ethnischen Gruppen, insbesondere jener türkischer Muttersprache, der Vorrang der internationalen Verträge, dieser Grundsatz. Von eminenter Bedeutung ist in Artikel 4 Absatz, ist in Artikel 5 Absatz 4. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Uh, it is perhaps just worthy of note before I say my few words that uh, it is good to see as members of the observer delegation from Bulgaria representation from all three of the parliamentary parties And that, I think, is indicative, as nothing else could be, of the way in which Bulgaria has uh, moved into democratic uh, practice uh, and shows it in, in our assembly. And uh, welcome to those observers, if I may please extend that uh, welcome on behalf of the assembly. Uh, Chairman, Bulgaria has been going through a complex but, I believe, irreversible process of eliminating the totalitarian communist system, uh, which had been in place for so long, uh, and building in its place a democratic society characterized by political pluralism, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, uh, and uh, a transition from a centrally planned and directed to a market economy. Uh, in this process, Bulgaria can credibly be described as one of the most rapidly democratizing countries in Eastern Europe. And it is worthy of note that this transition has been and continues to be peaceful and nonviolent. In my own visits to Bulgaria and in my talks with uh, Bulgarian people and representatives of Bulgarian people, uh, I have been struck by the mature comprehension and the extreme patience with which they face the inevitable hardships and deprivations which have accompanied this change of system. Uh, in considering these reports and in deciding whether to support Bulgaria's application to become a full member of the Council of Europe, this assembly must recognize and appreciate those achievements. Furthermore, Bulgaria has shown it respects the rights of people to self-determination in other countries as well as in its own country itself. And it has not taken any advantage of the difficulties in any of the, its neighboring or other countries. Uh, rather, I think that we can say that it has worked for improved bilateral and multilateral relations with other countries as part of the CSCE process. Uh, within Bulgaria, uh, as my colleague Mr. Martinez pointed out, the Constitutional Court has endorsed the continued existence of the movement of rights and freedoms, a predominantly but not exclusively Muslim and ethnic Turkish party, uh, including also Slav. Dans ce débat, de saluer la délégation bulgare et de dire à ses représentants combien nous nous réjouissons de savoir qu'ils vont bientôt siéger parmi nous en tant que délégués d'un nouvel État membre. Ce n'est que justice, en effet, car nous avons suivi avec une particulière attention les événements qui sont intervenus en Bulgarie au cours des trois dernières années et qui ont jalonné la marche courageuse de ce pays vers la constitution d'un État de droit, garant de la démocratie pluraliste et du respect des droits de l'homme, autant de faits positifs qui ne pouvaient qu'inciter le Conseil de l'Europe à adopter une attitude des plus favorables à l'entrée de la Bulgarie dans le creuset des nations d'Europe. Je voudrais à cet égard rendre hommage à nos collègues des commissions compétentes pour les efforts inlassables qu'ils ont accomplis en vue de cette adhésion que nous allons aujourd'hui 
approuve. Comme le rappellent d'ailleurs nos rapporteurs, c'est dès janvier 91 que tous les partis bulgares se sont mis d'accord sur un programme de réforme économique et institutionnelle. Une nouvelle constitution a été alors adoptée par l'Assemblée nationale le 12 juillet 91. Les élections législatives présidentielles ont eu lieu avec une forte participation du corps électoral. Les institutions sont donc en place, mais les difficultés économiques particulièrement graves demeurent et demeurent au centre des préoccupations des dirigeants et de l'opinion. Il faut donc tout mettre en œuvre pour aider la Bulgarie dans cette période de transition. C'est le seul moyen de donner leur chance aux nouvelles libertés dans ce pays si proche de nous, historiquement et culturellement, situé au cœur d'une région de l'Europe au riche passé, mais aussi enclin à toutes les déstabilisations. L'entrée de la Bulgarie au Conseil de l'Europe, que nous soutenons chaleureusement, marque une étape essentielle dans le retour vers son unité d'une Europe il y a peu divisée en deux blocs hostiles. Déjà, des étapes importantes ont été franchies dans la contribution de la Bulgarie à nos travaux et nous les seuls. Par exemple, l'adhésion à la Convention culturelle européenne qui marque de fait l'engagement de la Bulgarie dans un domaine si important pour le Conseil de l'Europe. De même, sommes-nous particulièrement heureux de savoir que dès cette année, la Bulgarie signera et ratifiera la Convention européenne des droits de l'homme, clé de voûte de notre action dans le domaine des libertés internationales. Ce qui est des minorités, nous pensons que la Bulgarie sera à même de participer plus activement encore aux travaux actuellement. Je frau, frau, frau General Secretärin, meine Damen und Herren. Zuerst möchte ich im Namen der bulgarischen Delegation bei den drei Berichterstattern, bei den neu gewählten Präsidenten der Versammlung, Herr Martinez, bei Herrn Kolumberg und bei Herrn Radborn für die wertvolle und ausführliche Beiträge ganz herzlich bedanken. Wir bedanken uns auch bei der Generalsekretärin des Europarates, Frau Lalomier, die in diesen zwei Jahren Bulgarien dreimal besucht hat und eine richtige Freundin unseres Landes geworden ist. Vielen Dank auch allen Kollegen, die im Rahmen der verschiedenen Ausschusssitzungen Bulgarien besucht haben. Die drei Berichte, die uns vorliegen, zeigen nicht nur Sympathie und ein Vertrauen zu der demokratischen Entwicklung in unserem Land. Sie zeigen vor allem, dass die Berichterstatter sehr gut und in allen Feinheiten die Situation in, ja, die Situation in Bulgarien kennen. Ja, zusätzlich möchte ich nur zwei kurze Informationen vom politischen Leben Bulgariens in den letzten Wochen mitteilen. Am 21. April hat das Verfassungsgericht die sehr wichtige Entscheidung getroffen, dass die Bewegung für Rechte und Freiheiten nicht der Verfassung widerspricht. So wurde endgültig die Stelle und die Teilnahme der türkischen Minderheit im politischen Leben gesichert, als eine Garantie, dass bei der Demokratisierung Bulgariens keinen Rückweg gibt. Vor zwei Wochen hat das bulgarische Parlament das wichtigste Gesetz für die Wirtschaftsreformen verabschiedet, das Privatisierungsgesetz. Dieses Gesetz wurde mit einer vorwiegenden Mehrheit von allen politischen Kräften unterstützt und gibt die Hoffnung für eine seit langem erwartenden Verbesserung der Wirtschaftslage in Bulgarien. Natürlich, als Vertreter des Regierenden Union der demokratischen Kräfte will ich auf keinen Fall unsere großen Schwierigkeiten verstecken. Es ist unheimlich schwer, ein so undemokratisches das System wie das Kommunistische in einer kurzen Zeit und nur mit demokratischen Mitteln zu beseitigen. Das werden alle Kollegen aus den ehemaligen sozialistischen Ländern mit vielen Beispielen bestätigen können. And the process of introducing another political balance built upon trust, mutual security and integration is underway. Bulgaria's positive answer to Hamlet's eternal question to be or not to be 
is entirely related to United Democratic Europe, to the political phenomenon, which is the substance and aim of the Council of Europe. Serious political differences in various fields exist in my country, but there is a common political interest which enjoys a national consensus. It is new Europe, Europe of solidarity, where the role of the Council of Europe could hardly be overestimated. At a time of the most considerable continental reconciliation, Europe has an even greater world emanation. I'm convinced that in global perspective, the effect of Europe or the patent of Europe will be increasingly spoken of. What I mean here is the ability of the old continent to realize its unity and its inseparability from the world. In other words, that is Europe's ability to build bridges inside itself and to throw bridges across to the rest of the world. Today, when more than ever before Bulgaria expects good news and optimistic decisions in Strasbourg, I would like to emphasize several principal points. Firstly, during the past two years, the Republic of Bulgaria, which is a peaceful and comparatively stable oasis on the Balkans, managed in a non-violent way to meet the requirements for full membership in the Council of Europe. A multi-party political system has been established and is functioning at a central and local level as a result of free and fair elections. A new democratic constitution, which guarantees the fundamental human rights and freedoms was adopted. Its basic principle is the priority of international law over national law. The major procedural requirements were met Three of the main committees from the Council of Europe were in session in Sofia. Several conventions open to non-member countries were ratified. The names of the senior representatives, Mr. Miguel Martinez, President, Ms. Catherine Larumier, Secretary General. The names of the three rapporteurs are well known in Bulgaria and have a high reputation. I take this occasion to express my gratitude for their hard work and for their objective assessment. Secondly, we have a consistent position on the Council of Europe and that position will remain unchanged. For the major values of modern European democracy. Thank you. To the contrary. Abstentions. I'm delighted to announce that the draft opinion contained in document 6591 has been unanimously adopted. Having now unanimously approved the admission of Bulgaria as the 27th member state, I should remind you that today is also celebrated throughout the continent as Europe Day. And uh, I will ask the Assembly now to stand for the European Anthem. <laughs> 